welcome everybody to Surprisingly Relatable, where we bring you fun and realistic pro tips, knowledge, and hacks you can use for real to build win-win relationships and make work-life balance a reality. My name is Holly Burby, and each week I'll share with you a thought, story, or self-awareness shortcut that will help you to get unstuck, reconnect to your significance and get focused and clear so you can relate to the people you care about the most. I truly believe that if we want to live a life of purpose and passion, it's time we put away the fake nicey nice and get to the root of how we can actually connect with each other in our homes and communities. That is how we can all succeed and move toward what we each want most. So if you're ready to be surprisingly relatable and evoke positive change that supports uplifts and inspires you and others in the world, you're in the right place. Let's get started. Hey friends, welcome back to the show. I don't know about you, but have you ever felt stuck in your life? And uh, yeah, I ask that in a pretty sarcastic way because I know For me personally, there have been many a time in my life where I have felt stuck. And in today's episode, what I wanted to share with you is a surprising hack that you can use when you have that feeling of being stuck. Now, why is the hack surprising? It's more like it was unsuspecting because when I learned of this and then I considered all the times in my life where I did feel stuck and then found my way out of it, I actually was implementing this hack the entire time and I didn't even realize it. So I wanted to share it with you because I really hope that it gives some support, some help to you or people that you know and love in your life. And hopefully you can relate. Let's talk about why we might feel stuck in the first place. In my personal experience, I've learned now being a woman in my early 40s, I learned probably, I don't know, maybe a decade ago, that about every four years, I get an itch to change something in my life, specifically in my career or in terms of where I live, my personal environment. And I started to notice this pattern when I was a public school teacher. And one of the things I was very strategic about when I went into education was I wanted to be in a profession that would never feel monotonous. Monotony just sounds awful to me. (laughs) Like I know when I feel monotonous in my life, I feel like adventure is gone. So for me personally, when I feel my life is getting monotonous, very repetitive, Groundhog's Day, right? Over and over again, like the movie, that is when I began to feel stuck. And when I look back on my life, I can see where still today, about every four years, I want to shift something, move to a new city, move to a new home, move to a new state, leave my corporate desk job and go and start my own business. Now changing my business and rebranding my business or starting a podcast after making videos for four years straight. There's going, and I'm using my examples because the invitation here is for you to look back on the years you've been alive and consider, hmm, I wonder about how often it is that I feel stuck. Is there a pattern there, a certain amount of time where you are being internally nudged by the wisest part of you or for believers like me, you're being nudged by God to take your life in a different direction, closer toward what you're destined for and what you ultimately would really love to do. So to be inspired is what is required to get unstuck. So if you feel stuck, you want to be inspired. Now, inspiration doesn't always come from outside of us, okay? And inspiration doesn't always come from inside of us as well. Thus, stuck. We ain't going anywhere. It's like that feeling of the momentum is gone or the excitement is gone or maybe it's something that you do now in your career or with your family or with a relationship or with a hobby. There might be something in your life where maybe in the past when you spent time with this person or doing this thing or in this job, the time could fly by and you didn't get sick of it. 
you loved it and you were passionate about that. And maybe you don't have that same feeling anymore. The momentum is gone. The passion is gone or it's dimmed, maybe not even gone. And that can lead lead any of us to feel like we are stuck. So the hack here is oftentimes, especially here in the United States where I live, there is this perception or there is this cultural dialogue that to be stuck is a bad thing. That if you are not always producing and creating and momentum and moving forward, then you're doing things wrong. Productivity is king. And some people will see being stuck automatically because of this culture that's being created. Some people will view being stuck as a negative thing automatically, no matter what, no matter how long you felt stuck for, no matter what you area of your life you're feeling stuck about, in certain cultures, being stuck is not welcome. And the other pressure that comes with that is, oh, you feel stuck? Well, find your momentum, find your motivation. You need to just buckle down and get the thing done, right? And it turns into this, instead of looking for ways to re-inspire ourselves, we look for ways to force ourselves to keep going in that thing. It's almost like there's this false idea that if I just push a little harder at whatever this thing is that's monotonous or boring or not lighting me up anymore, if I just push myself harder or do more, suddenly it will not be annoying anymore. Suddenly it will suddenly be fun again or I won't feel stuck again. And that is not true. Forcing our way through a stuck point is not the can it's not the cure. It's not the answer to getting unstuck. So if we can't rely on the inner dialogue to re-motivate us to keep going and the outer dialogue of society and culture, especially here in the United States, is push through it, suck it up, you're gonna be fine. Uh how are we supposed to get unstuck? And here's where the hack can come into play. To get unstuck, often what happens is when we feel that way, we're so focused on our inner thoughts, our feelings. We're so focused on ourselves, We almost can become, or, or maybe you just point blank, are self-centered. Like everything becomes about how it will impact you personally. And one of the phrases that I learned many moons ago from my mentors and leadership training uh, teachers and developers that I worked alongside of is when you are in doubt, focus out. When you are in doubt, focus out. And so the hack to getting unstuck is to get in contact, make five phone calls, five phone calls to five people that you know, like, trust, get along with, that you think could offer you some wisdom in guiding you out of this situation. So a couple of things. When I say you're having doubt focus out, oftentimes that means do this in terms of service, right? How can you go be in service to someone? But ultimately, I mean, how many times in your life has someone ever come to you and said, hey, I really could use your advice. You're such a wise person. I really respect your opinion and your experience. How many times in your life has someone come to you with that and said, mm, no. <laughs> so like when I say when in doubt, focus out, remember that when you go and call these five people that you respect, that you know they have the wisdom, the experience, the knowledge, and possibly the advice and the solution that can support you in getting unstuck, remember that you're giving them an opportunity to be in service to you. People typically love to help other people in this fashion, especially if they are asked for it. So consider five people, again, that you know, that you like, that you trust, and call them one at a time. And when you do, explain where you are feeling stuck ask them for their advice and the intention in this. And here is a something to be on the lookout for. When you call these five people, your intention is to learn from them, to hear their wisdom, to learn from their experience. They may not relate identically to what you are going through, 
but they may perhaps have a solution that can get you toward where you want to go. What you do not want to do, and notice if you want to, is call them and then use the phone call to complain about how frustrated you are that you are stuck. We don't want to use our time that way. We want to allow people an opportunity to share their wisdom with us. We're giving them an opportunity to be in service to someone that they likely care about or respect. Who's you? Okay. So go to the five people, call them up one at a time. And the tongue in cheek bet that goes along with this is you make a list of the five people you're going to call and get support with and get a solution with so that you can get unstuck, the odds are you won't even make it to the fifth person on the phone. And not because you give up and quit, but the likelihood is that if you really consider the best people for you to speak to, you'll probably have a great solution or a viable next step that you can take probably by the second or third person that you've talked to, if not sooner, if not the first. So use this hack anytime you are feeling stuck. And again, this could be stuck in a career move. This could be stuck in parenting. Think of other parents that even if you don't know them very well, but you have their contact information, or maybe there's someone that is a friend of friend that you're connected to through social media, and you just really seem to like how they do things, just DM people, message people and say, hey, I love how you think. (laughs) I would love to pick your brain about something I'm stuck with. Could we have a quick phone call for, I don't know, 15 minutes or put a time on it? But people often, again, enjoy being in service to other people. And this is where even if they cannot relate to what you are going through 100%, what we all can relate with is the one thing that we all want is love. And that means we are seen and heard and understood and listened to and able to give back to people in the world in some way, shape, or form. And I really hope that you take this to heart. Consider the five people that you would reach out to for different areas of your life. And if you're feeling stuck, I hope it's not for a really long season. And if it is, I'm sure there's gifts there waiting for you. And we can talk about those on another episode. So again, I thank you all for being here. And until next time, I'll talk to you all next time. Thanks for listening. And if you love this episode and know of someone else who's passionate about creating authentic relationships with people, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you'd help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, I'd super appreciate it if you'd take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. And until next time, show love always, in all ways. And may you discover that we're all surprisingly relatable.